Uh, this is part five of the Make Your Own Mobile Game in 60 Minutes video series, sponsored by Chromacoders.org, uh, a student club dedicated to actually getting students to make their own video games in teams. So let's get started. Uh, before we were actually having these bananas fall from the sky, and then we were talking about actually having it so that once the bananas are on the ground, we can actually have the player touch them to remove them and have the phone vibrate so that you know people, the players are getting feedback as they're doing it. And so that's step 5A right here. We're going to add an event listener to that banana you know, that we create in that on-frame function. And we're just going to say that the event is a touch. If the player touches that banana object, we're going to call vibrate banana. So what we're going to do is then we're going to just go up to vibrate banana right here, which is this function. And we're just going to uncommon out this stuff and just say, you know what, if the phase is ended, because the touch event has a begin phase and an end phase, if it's ended, we're going to print out vibrate, dot vibrate, vibrate called. And then we're also going to do a system.vibrate, uh, just so if you're playing it on the actual device, it'll vibrate the device. And also, we'll just say event.target colon remove self, which means that the banana, you know, once it's touched, will remove it from the scene. And don't forget, we have to close the if statement with the end, and we have to close the function with another end. Okay, so we save that. And what we're going to do is run it, but we're also going to show the terminal, because you know that print statement where we said vibrate called? I'm going to show you why we can use that, because your PC probably can't vibrate when we touch that banana, but at least you can output this so that we can debug, we can figure out that something's going on. So see that vibrate called got printed out, and see when it's on the ground, we can tap the bananas to remove them. Great. So that's the next step. And now let's go to 6A. And what we need to do is now add the accelerometer so that, you know, when the player tilts it left or right, tilts the game or tilts the phone left or right, uh, it'll move the monkey accordingly. So what we're going to do is we're going to add another event listener called accelerometer. And so we go to on tilt. And what that is is another function right here, which takes an event which sends in accelerometer data, which is the X gravity and Y gravity and whatever else. And so what we do is on that event, we just say, you know what, the monkey's X position or whatever will move based on how much the player has tilted it left or right. And we can also have the Y position move a little, so it's a little gravitational, like, you know, it feels like it's hopping. So we save that. We hit um, run. But it turns out that we actually, you know, our PC can't even support the accelerometer events. So, you know what, we're going to have to test this on the device. But before we do that, uh, let's, uh, you know, let's actually make sure that we have the logic so that when the player tilts the accelerometer left and right, you know, to catch the banana, it can actually catch the banana. So what we have to do is we have to say, you know what, that banana that we add, we added, you know, in the on frame function, we're going to say that when it collides with something, you know, in that physics system where we've added the banana and we've added the monkey, if it collides with something, there's an event, what we call a collision event. And we can say banana.collision will call the on local collision function. So what we do is, you know, we uncommented uh, that out, but then we go to the on local collision, which is right up here, step 6C. And that function is where once a collision begins, which is the phase of the collision has began, we're going to say that, you know what, if the object, the self.object is a banana, and then it hits the monkey, what we're going to do is we're going to just get the velocity, you know, the Vx and v Vy, and we're going to say that, you know what, if it's falling from the sky, because if, it, if the monkey hits the banana when it's on the ground, it shouldn't do anything. But, so if the velocity is, you know, greater than 3, so that means it's still falling from the sky, we're going to increment the number of bananas eaten, we're going to update the score text, there we go, and then we're going to remove the banana, and that's where the self colon remove self does. And don't forget we have to close the if statement uh, for the velocity check, and then we have to close the if statement to make sure uh, for the for the if it's a uh, if it's actually colliding with the monkey, then we have to close the if statement uh, to check to see if the object that's actually being um, uh, creating the event is a banana, banana, and then we have to close the if statement to make sure that the phase of the event is the beginning, the beginning phase of when the collision happens. We don't want the end phase. We want to make it seem like the banana disappears as soon as it touches the monkey. Then we have to close the function itself with another end. Um, so we do all that. We hit control save, you know, control S save. And now what we do is what we can do is we can just see that when the bananas fall or hits the monkey, it'll kind of disappear. Well, you may say, well, what happened? That first banana didn't really disappear. 
And you're right, because what we did is we only added that on local collision to the bananas created in that on frame function. So what we can do now is we can actually add that to the banana, that initial original banana, that special banana. We do is we add the event listener touch, uh, you know, for the vibrate effect, uh, just in case it falls on the ground. But then also, then we say banana.collision equals on local collision. That's the function it'll call. And we add the event listener called collision. So that banana now, whenever it collides with something, we'll call that on local collision function. So now we're going to reset, re relaunch, and now you see, like, when it actually hit the monkey, it disappeared. So that's cool. Now we have it, but you know what? How do we test to make sure that it actually can catch all these other bananas and stuff like that? Because we can't do the accelerometer, right? So now the next step is actually to put it on the, on the phone. So it's just pretty exciting. So what you want to do is actually there's a little small step here to make sure that we can easily relaunch it on the phone. So at the end of the code, um, you'll see something in event listener for the system, which is the on system events. So what you want to do is you add that, and then you just uncommon out this on system event function. Actually, it's all of this stuff. So there's an is, is simulator code, and then there you go. Comment that out. in this if statement and basically what we're saying is that you know what whenever the player hits the home button or the return or the back button on their phone we're just gonna exit uh, very simple um, and there you go oh wait hang on a second let's make sure we also uncomment out these os.exit functions so we just save that then hit control R and basically it's good to go and we can check the simulator to make sure everything's fine but now how do we actually turn this into our game let's see Okay, so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to build this. And what you do to do that is you can go to File, Build For. And in this case, we're just going to use Android because Android allows you to easily put it on your device as compared to iPhone where you need an I I developer account and all this other stuff. So we're going to build for Android. And this is where you give it your, fir your name, which we'll just call it First Game. The version code we'll just say is 1. And then the package. And this is where you do like com dot uh, whatever your studio name is. So since this is a, you know, sponsored by Chroma Coders, I'm just going to say com.chromacoders.firstgame. And that's your package name. That's what's your unique identifier. So when you're on Android Market, you, that's your unique identifier so that um, it can keep track of, like, how many people have downloaded your unique game. So once you do that, uh, you know, make sure your key alias, I think in your case, um, if you don't have a key, just make it, use the debug key. I think if you're using the trial version, you can just choose the debug key. And hang on a second. And then hit build. And what it'll do is hang on. Okay, so now it'll start building. And what it does is it, you know, contacts the Corona server takes all that code and builds it. So while it's building, let me tell you what you have to also do on your phone to get this to work. Um, you need to go to, um, you know, see your game on your phone. So basically what you need to do is once that APK, once it's done building, it'll build an APK file. You need to email that to the file or email that file to the email associated with your phone. And that will allow you to install the APK. Uh, just straight straight from your phone. You can just send it to your email account and then there will be an install button and you can install it. But there's one other thing you definitely need to do because if you don't do that, it won't allow you to install this game that you made because it's officially not on the market. So you need to allow for third-party apps to be installed. And to do that, what you do is you go to Applications. You know, on your phone, go to Applications, then go to Settings. Then in Settings, go to Applications. Again, there's an Applications option there. And at the top of that, there's something called Check the Unknown, you know, Unknown Sources slash allow install of non-market applications. Make sure you have that checked. Once you check that, you know, then you can hit OK. And then what you do is you just send that little APK, which, you know, that first game, it'll tell you it's done. So you can hit view and explore. And you'll see this first game here. That'll be your APK, wherever you outputted it. And um, just send it to your phone. And then you can pretty much run it on your phone. Uh, so, you know, really simple. And um, so that's, you know, that's the interactive lab part of the video. And so the next step, what we will do is we'll actually discuss how you will, now that you've made a game, how will you actually get your game noticed and actually make money from your game? 
Um, so until then, enjoy. <laughs>